we are at the special edition, another special edition of the Print Soft Cover, and we have two very interesting people, Mr. Nandan Nilikani, who I don't really need to introduce, but he is the co-founder of Infosys Technologies and also a chief architect of UIDAI. We also have Mr. Tarun Bojwani, who is a fellow at iSpirit Foundation. Many thanks for joining us in this uh, uh, episode and we'll talk about uh, your book but before that i'd like to show how wrapped we, we have wrapped your book and we are going to unveil this before we uh, get into our conversation so great yeah here we go and this is how the book looks like and it's called the art of bitfulness keeping calm in the digital world primarily the theme sort of is uh, it, it the art cover sort of uh, resonates the theme as well. I'd like to put it up for your viewers, for our viewers. And jumping straight into the conversation, Mr. Nelikani, I'll come to you first. The art of bitfulness, it's an interesting uh, title and I'd like to know why was bitfulness a huge part of the book's theme? Well, uh, you know, what happened was that uh, during the pandemic, we became even more and more digitally dependent because we were all cooped up at home and doing everything online and so on. And uh, uh, I, I, I could see that some of these things, people were, uh, you know, doom scrolling and getting upset and all those kinds of things. So as a way to break my monotony, I started uh, going for a walk in the park, suitably distanced, wearing masks and so on. And Tanuj would join me. Right. And then we both discussed and we realized that we are both feeling the same thing. And we also found that we had a, a set of uh, tools that we had worked out to make our lives uh, simpler and calmer. And right. they, though we are 30 years apart in age, uh, we the, conceptually they were the same. Uh, and then we felt that we should really talk about how we should be on top of our technology. The technology mm -hmm. should not be on top of us. People just get even more stressed out with too much of you know slack messages and whatsapp and this and that and how can you be in top of technology that's what inspired us to write the book at the same time the book the the second part of the book is about what are the collective actions that we can do to address some of the issues where we talk about the work that we have both worked on in india's digital infrastructure so one part of the book is about individuals uh, being on top of their technology the second part is how can societies build technology in a better way to achieve the same goal for many people. Right. Uh, Mr. Bojwani, taking off from Mr. Nil what Mil Mr. Nilikani said, it's about how there was an age difference. And while reading the book, I felt that I was in a position of some self-reflection where I'm exploring why do I always have the fear of missing out? And that aspect of it will resonate with your generation, with our generation, perhaps a little more, because it's a little out of control sometimes. What do you have to say about that? Like, how would you like to articulate that for us? I think, uh, you know, you're right that I, I think our generation just has uh, things that Nandan due to age just had an escape velocity. So, for example, yeah. this is the one that's most shocking is that Nandan is not on WhatsApp. Right? I, I, think, I think people just still think that he's lying or he's saying that for them it's inconceivable to not be on whatsapp so i think those issues he gets it but uh, i think the velocity of information the amount of information coming at us has hmm. increased across the board even for somebody like him which is why like nandan was saying in the walk in the park it was a genuine surprise to me that it's happening to him and i think he was mildly surprised that you know oh, i thought you young people have it all figured out right so i think yeah. that that sense of uh, both of us realizing that despite this age gap, problems are similar and solutions, if at all the ones that right. are very similar, uh, then became the foundation of this book. And, and we hope that it is universal. Therefore, um, you know, as a, as a point of example, I think I found a lot more people, even in their 40s, 50s, coming up to us and saying, hey, the ideas in this book helped, right? Not yeah. every idea is not very useful to everyone. But there are ideas in the book that are useful to a lot of people, right? Different ideas. So that has been uh, for us also sort of a great, um, how do you say, validation of, of what we've done here. Correct, correct. And one thing which was very uh, eminent was, uh, especially with uh, you, Mr. Nilikan, you've seen a tremendous transformation in this country. We have depended our lives on technology and you yourself have contributed so much. 
so what according to you was a dire moment in time i know pandemic was a dire moment when we realized but the problem was still there so what made you think that this conversation needs to happen because in the previous books you spoke about how technology is needed and how we should you know penetrate it to our lives but why was this conversation regarding uh, a better relationship with technology was like a big part of the conversation well i you know i think that's a great question my first two books uh, imagining india and uh, uh, or you know all, all the books i've done Uh, I mean, the two books I did prior to uh, the, uh, this book were really big policy books, mm. and they were how do you change India at scale and and, and so on. Mm. And I realized that you know while it, while policy books are important, it really doesn't appeal to everyone. Yes, is there a way to you know reach everyone in the context of the technology they use, uh, and not only help them learn how to master that better, mm. also explain why it is the way it is. You know, what is it the fact that uh, there was no a commercial model on the internet that led to uh, advertising advertising led to data gathering data gathering you realize that you have to engage people more to get their data yeah, engagement right. meant you have to you know get them onto the hot buttons and get them to react which led yeah. to polarization so you know there's a certain path that we have followed in the last few years and mm -hmm. i thought it's important for people to understand why we are where we are so it's both what you can do why we are where we are and what can we do differently in the future in the design of our national system so it is a policy book at the end of the day but it starts with a person's uh, individual experience and also hopefully or some benefit to them in the way they manage their digital technology correct correct and i think this question i'd like to pose for both of you uh, whoever would like to you know pick it up and give your own context because i feel technology has different context in diff for different people so what kind of technologies these days especially with conversation we have google pay we have whatsapp uh, instagram especially has created uh, has occupied a lot of space correct so how do you think we can navigate our lives through it i mean yeah yeah let how me let me start and i'll ask uh, the, see first of all i am a big believer in technology for uh, the everybody and you know i've been at the forefront of both in my capacity at infosys which was about helping companies transform with technology and my role in the public era like uh, uh, like aadhar and all which is built for a billion people yes. so i'm very much a believer that technology can improve lives and give opportunity for people and so on so i have no doubt about that hmm. but in the process of the kind of applications that people use uh, you know the whatsapp of the world they actually have tended to become you know spending all the time on that uh, or, or even you know for example on instagram you always have to look good and all that on all the pictures that you post and so on so you know there's a lot of uh, it causes a lot of uh, people get absorbed with it and often and then there's a, you know you have a lot of these polarizing messages you know i find that half my friends are liberals and half of them believe that you know they are bucks so it's it's you know it's a very difficult environment where they always shooting at each other and so on yes. so i believe that uh, that's really counterproductive and is not an appropriate use of technology the way it should be so that's what we are trying to address okay yeah and um, no i didn't what nandan is saying i think uh, there's a line that nandan also said right now in the interview and i think is one of our core messages right like if you don't design your technology around your life somebody else will design you know their technology around their goals rather than you doing it for your goals um and that's really the key take away of this right how do you navigate is that while most of us get on to instagram because everybody else is on to instagram or we get on to twitter because we believe this is you know like i'm sure as a journalist you have to be on twitter is what you tell yourself right you can't not be on twitter yeah um, um but the idea is what purpose is it really serving for you are you there to get leads for stories are you there to watch the action of people are you there to sort of you know pick this for uh, and depending on what you do and in there are ways in which you can configure your technology to promote that use while um, you know uh, sort of not letting yourself get carried away like a simple one that i found is that when i had to go to twitter while writing this book for research um, there was this wonderful tool called uh, newsfeed eliminator Yes. So basically, even if I go to Twitter, I can only go to a specific tweet and look at that. I can't go to my news feed. I can only do research on Twitter, which is what I used to tell myself I'm doing, but then get lost in it, right? 
So by thinking about this upfront and thinking about what purpose do these tools serve in your life, um, and the book provides a framework on how to do that, how to make sure those boundaries stay around, you know, like hard in that sense that when I am researching, when I'm working, Twitter is a tool. When I am relaxing, Twitter is, I can go, you know, look up memes and share and whatever. And so it's yeah. be the same software, same platform configured differently for you. Um, but I think that's, that's the key question to ask, which is what is this tool doing in my life? Also, I think what's happening is, uh, you know, in the physical world, we distinguish where we are by, you know, because we know physically, for example, if you're in a library, you know, it's a quiet place. It's a place for work and for reflection and for reading. And uh, if you start making a noise and everybody looks at you, glares at you and tells you to keep quiet. So you know that a library is a place to do quiet work. Yeah. If you go to a party, on the other hand, it's a loud place. You have a drink, you pat somebody on the back, you have conversation, you, you know, enjoy yourself. Or if you go to a park for a walk or a run, you know you're going there to breathe fresh air, see the birds, get some exercise. So in the physical world, where we are sets our context. In the digital world, when I've got you know 17 apps open on my device, then everything is changing very rapidly. You know, I'm getting a WhatsApp message here, I'm getting a Slack message here, I'm getting a news notification there, and it's all a jumble. And we realize that that actually is not good for the people because they are always sort of floating from one thing to another, which is why in our book, we talk about three modes and we can talk later also. It's about create, curate, and communicate. And mm. therefore create, and therefore create these profiles or create these uh, things. And when you go into that mode, your mental model also goes into that mode. Another uh, aspect has just popped up in my mind right now. You've said that there are three modes, right? So do you think that we are trying to uh, make AI behave in a certain way because I think uh, when you're off Instagram or when you're off Twitter for a while, the apps call you back. The apps yes. call you back by giving you email notifications. If you are not available on email as well, they will call you back. If you have been a heavy user, they will try to call you back. Even yeah, if yeah. I try to curate and create my world, but it will try to, you know, tell you that, hey, come back and engage yeah. with us more. So. Yeah. How do we deal with no, that? No, that's very true. But you see, when we talk about a create mode, a create mode is a mode where you are sitting down working. For example, if you're writing your next article for the print and your editor has asked you to produce a thousand word article in the next six hours on some topic, you want to sit down and write it properly. Hmm. You know, or if you're doing a spreadsheet or a business calculation. Now, in the create mode, we would advise that all these notifications and all that be shut off. Now, the way I, and this is where the difference between me and Tanuj, the way I do it, I do it by doing all my work on my laptop. Hmm. And on my laptop, I don't have anything anyway. I just have my, you know, my office and all that. So when I'm sitting on my laptop, I'm sitting in the same place with the books around me and lighting. I know I'm in work mode. So I always, when I sit at my laptop, it's work mode. Sure. Now, Tanuj does it on his device, but he has a profile for working. And when he logs through that profile, all the other apps with notifications are not there. So they don't come and interrupt him during that one hour that he's working. So you create these artificial, these boundaries and sort of go into that mode of working. That's and, uh, huh. and, and to, to build on this, right? Like um, they call you back, yes, but they call you back through notifications. They call you back through a bunch of them. What has happened, thankfully, is from the time these things started to now, um, your ability to control because of pushback, uh, you know, um, both your major mobile phone OSs, Apple and Google, have built in controls to help you limit uh, screen time, etc. On Android, which I'm hoping is what most of us use, is uh, there's also granular control on which notifications can disturb you. Hmm. For example, on WhatsApp, this most people don't know about this, but you can actually set it to if this person pings me, if this person pings me, give me notification. Everything else don't, right? Yeah. So there is ways of, and, and these are all like, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes of your time once, but the amount of time you don't get disturbed in a day after that is pays for itself in two days, right? But it's just that this, this thing needs to be done. Uh, so Instagram, again, similarly, you can turn off the notification, I don't have to do anything else except say direct messages or, you know, whatever your interest in comments and this and that, so that they pull you back only if, you know, in a way that you allow them to, right? So that. Again, reclaiming control, knowing that you are in charge is, is a big part of this. Correct. 
and uh, it's very important to see how the book was structured i saw that initially you started with a lot of stories then it was more about the theory of it all and then there were i wouldn't reveal what exactly they were but uh, they were mostly very uh, concise very succinct points of what exactly uh, the topic is about so how would you suggest a reader to read the book like what would you what would be your um, words of wisdom to a person who's reading the book I'll ask Tanuj to answer that. Tanuj, it's uh, honestly we we try to be engaging, so we try to write stories. Uh, there is a there is a bit of a struggle because at some point you don't want to just be talking high level and give um, real solid advice and tips and you know how Nandan manages email, how Nandan manages this, how I manage, how, you know. So like, so those make up the middle of the book, frankly. <laughs> uh, what I hope people will find interesting before they even jump into the middle uh, or, or whatever is that if you read section. one part one that really lays out the argument of the book and what we are going to say in subsequent sections um and uh, so there's chapter 1 2 3 which is basically it's called i'll give this away it's called a toxic relationship that is what we are framing the problem between our devices and us as which is that you know we we both know it's not good for us but we keep going back for more it's a it's a toxic relationship in that sense um and like with any toxic relationship there is it's not one party to blame it is you know patterns of behavior and there is therefore a chapter called the problem with us mm-hmm. and a chapter called the pr- uh, uh, the problem with it right which is the problem with technology it um so that frames the arguments to follow in part 2 and part three, right and uh, like nandan said there is a view on how is us as individuals can manage our relationship with technology but there's also how as a society we can all you know stop this from happening again right yeah. because how do we not have the next uh, you know attention economy company or how do we not have the next aggregator which is monopolizing the market right how do we not have these things now yeah. depending on which catches your interest i would say then you switch to according to chapter 4 or chapter 13 which is uh, beginning of part 2 and part 3 respectively yeah. um but please do read the whole book if you can <laughs> right like yeah yeah obviously and and uh, tell us how it is like you know drop us a message on twitter they're both uh, right. right i am i was really curious because uh, uh, technology as a subject is as i said we touched upon it a little about how it's so different for two different generations what was the main challenge in writing the book for everyone because it is for the young for the old for the working for people who are struggling who may not be struggling but still trying to foresee a future where they could be struggling so what was this main challenge for you guys to you know put it together be digestible for everyone i'll i'll start that uh, and i'll hand over to tanuj i think uh, a lot of the book has benefited from tanuj because he's a very unusual person he's a left brain right brain person he you know he's a guy who went to iit and he started coding at the age of 11 or something he's one of those prodigies who started programming at the age of 11 so he's been at it for 20 years so uh, he's a he knows tech very well and today he's he's a deep expert on crypto but at the same time you know he did a program at ashoka and he's uh, trained in the liberal arts so you know he he has he's able to both have technology and uh, and you know the liberal arts kind of background and he likes to tell stories so all these ideas is really tanuj's credit that he's able to simplify and put it out in a way that it is uh, understandable to everybody young and old as well as people who are tech savvy or people who are not tech savvy correct correct so this is a uh, high praise but uh, the challenge of course the challenge right in this is that um, you 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 know i read this when i was writing the book initially i think uh, i used to struggle nandan was always this calm person i used to be very anxious about what we are writing um and somewhere along the way i think you know this got reinforced is that um I learned that the only obligation you have as a writer is to be interesting. It is not to stick to a certain structure. It is not to do. It is just somebody is giving you the gift of their time. Are you doing them? Are you returning that respect and that favor to them, right? Um, and therefore, uh, instead of trying to land a message or whatever, I just sort of focused on: Is this interesting, right? If yeah. I had not been the one writing this, is this something that I would read? Is there something that I believe I will learn from this? Uh, is it telling me things? Sometimes the overarching point may be simple, but you have to make it for an audience for whom this is the first time they are hearing it. So then, can you make it better by telling anecdotes or giving like facts that you know that even yes. the, an expert can enjoy? Yes. So it was essentially that, and then I think given the 
diversity of the viewpoint that both of us go at it uh, you see things that you know either one of us would not have seen so i think that has also benefited the book a lot in terms of nandan's clarity and like on the foresight in the future and you know how things will shape out etc uh, and sort of my detail on how to like you know how do we manage this etc like that coming from experience i think all of that has come together in the book even if i'm saying this myself i will ask your readers to judge it um, yeah. by reading it correct uh unfortunately that's all the time we have uh, but before we uh, close the session i would like to probably give an open field for you to probably talk about any last thoughts you have anything that you have to convey to your readers or any aspect that we didn't touch upon i guess now's the time to talk about it well we we think the biggest value for our readers is that by even following some of the suggestions and tips in this book they will have a better sort of control over their lives over their time over their happiness uh, over the technology and uh, so we really would like them to see that at the same time understand why we are where we are and we think this is the third crisis we have yeah. the climate crisis we have the pandemic and we also have the overuse of some of these technologies so we think this is a very important topic for everyone to appreciate yeah. absolutely mr pojwani just what uh, i didn't what nandan saying i think um, the the real secret of this book is not also is not just how to manage your time how to manage your device attention technology the real secret of this book is and this is feedback from readers that the aha moment is when you realize how these big problems we worry about and these small problems that we think are individual right yeah. my attention is being so i spend too much time on instagram but at the same time what is happening to society what is happening to elections polarization these two are related very deeply they related by a common idea which is how these technologies are built um in the book we go over the history of this like nandan was saying but then we also present an alternative model so i hope people see that this is you know two sides of the same coin and therefore we are fighting uh to fix this in the larger sense both on an individual basis and a collective basis that's that's what i hope people um, will enjoy when they read the book right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bhujwani and Mr. Nalikani, for joining us. And I hope that our readers, I'm showing it for the second time, and uh, see this uh, cover, get it, get this book, read it. It's highly recommended. I personally enjoyed reading it. Also, a lot of self-reflection needed at this time. So I guess uh, I, I hope all the readers go through the same experience as I have. Thank you so much, sir. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.